this was cool because he, he pulled out an old song of his um, called Sex and Violence and he's like, I was looking for something. I'm going to try playing some riffs and we'll try to do a jam off some riffs from this. So he plays these things and records them in. And it has us start to do our chaos. We each kind of improv and we add and build on to it. And it comes around to my last time. Um, what are you going to do? And I was like, I went and I saw there was the lyrics. Johnny and I were standing just outside the studio as he was getting ready to record the vocals. And Johnny made the comment to me of, wow, well, this was sort of written to be a pop song. There's an awful lot of words there. <laughs> and I, I laughed and I said, oh, well, you're talking about my brother Tor, who is notorious for eating up my lyrics and being psychotic. <laughs> I can turn a page of a dictionary into a song. Uh, and, and then I didn't end up using that lead vocal track at all. I just kept the, in this one, I just kept the background vocals that you recorded in. I think they all, you know, just kind of start out pretty strong. And yeah. This one you were doing a lot of, um, it was fun to watch him on the boards. Because he was over there, you know, the sliders would go up, and he'd listen for a bit, and then another slider would come down. And you were really active, pulling things in and out. Well, I like the fade in and fade out of parts. Especially acid, I didn't really have that capability in Acid Pro. So it's nice to just, instead of just having a part go drop, to bring it down and make it sound a little more, the whole flow of it a little more. Cool. This is nice, short, very song. I mean, very, really very song like, is as improvisational as it was, and as divergent as it was from the source material, it's extremely accessible and very song like, as opposed to, say, some of the ones we did from the first batch soundtrack type. Yes, for all you out there, uh, what we tried to do is, we, 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 we did play one at a time in the studio, but it was, he go, then I'd add a track off of what he did, and then she'd add a track, and then we kept adding, but not every one person just doing a chunk and, alright, now you add to my song. It was one at a time, building upon it, and you didn't know, I mean, you could have an idea and go, I think I'm going to do this, and then He'll come in or she'll come in and do something and it's like, oh, all right, that's kind of there already now. Hmm, what am I going to do We'll do something that you like, well, you get an idea of what you're going to do next, but then you hear what they're going to do and it's like, well, I'm going to change what I do because, not necessarily they did that already, but because it's like, well, this isn't going to work with what that they did, so I'm going to have to do something different and see what I can do. And it kind of inspires you into a, a new direction too. I mean, I, I know when uh, I didn't get up first on the, to do any of the mixes and when you're listening to someone else slowly pull in and, and start to create something out of the chaos that's up there um, on the board you start to get ideas for yourself because oh hey I hear that sound clearly and I think I want to do this or I want to do that why wouldn't you use that sound why are they using that sound well for being told I do the weird mixes at the end all the time <laughs> I will say this, they had done a little more obscure kind of things playing on some instruments. I went in and did kind of more of the pop mix. So I didn't do the strange weird one at the end. Ha! Well, someone has to get one that sounds more normal, right? <laughs>